the last few days, the whole conversation of the WNBA versus staying in college has been a big conversation. Now, the W the twenty twenty three WNBA draft is next Monday. It's Monday, April the tenth, seven PM or ESPN. It's interesting that a lot of your top WNBA prospects have elected to stay in college instead of putting their names in the WNBA draft. And it's for a number of reasons. And we're going to get into some of these reasons. Number one biggest reason that a lot of these top WBA prospects are staying in college. The lack of roster space as far as WBA teams. Only 144 women play in the WBA. And most of the rosters are only maybe 11 12 deep. That's why everybody's asking Kathy for expansion. We need more teams to adequately be able to accommodate all the talented players that are entering their names in the WNBA draft. Not just this year for the 2023 draft, but next year's 2024 draft is going to be loaded. And it's going to be sad to see when a lot of these players have exhausted their fifth year right and entered their name in the WNBA draft and they don't stick to a team. It's going to be sad to see. So expansion slash lack of roster spots. Number two, WNBA doesn't have chartered flights. You've you've followed a lot of WNBA players, and they have shown you on Instagram and TikTok the nightmares that happen with them flying, and they fly commercial. Versus, if these top prospects stay in college, they're flying private jets, they're flying the top line uh, airlines. They don't have these issues that WNBA players have. They're flying comfortably. Number number three. WNBA, the I think the starting off salary for a top player is only seventy six to eighty thousand. That's the max. Versus. Some of these college players have multiple NIL deals with top companies and are making more than that. So why would I take the risk of putting my names into the WBA draft and potentially not making the roster? I give up my college eligibility and I have nothing. Versus... Staying my fifth year, the COVID year that they were given, and rocking up NIL and get another year of education. Um, these are the things that the college players have to weigh the pros and cons of. That's why, if you notice, a lot of top players have elected to use their fifth year, COVID year. Most recently today, Carissa Osmar had put her name in the draft and took her name out. She's returning to UCLA. That's great for them to build upon for next year. Um, India Rogers, as far as um, Oregon, she had put her name in the draft and then she took her name out. I don't know if she's returning to Oregon or is she entering in the transfer portal. Um... Elizabeth Kitley, as far as Virginia Tech, she would have been a top five pick had she won the draft. She's deciding to go back to Virginia Tech. Um, Rakia Jackson. Rakia Jackson elected to stay in college. She just most recently got an NIL deal with Mercedes, Mercedes-Benz of Knoxville. So... 
when I say these top female prospects as far as WA are racking up NIL deals and money as far as staying in college, like Angel Reese said, she probably she makes more as far as her NIL money than a lot of the WBA players make. And I I can believe that. I can believe that. Um, Angel Reese has a lot of endorsement deals. Coach. Um, I believe she has Beast by Dre. She has um, Kane. She has Outback Steakhouse. You name it. Angel Reese has a lot of them. She has a lot of them. So if I can make more than 80K, which is a starting rookie salary or more than a WNBA player is bringing in in a year and all it takes is for me to play another year cost basketball and get a get another year education why wouldn't I jump at the opportunity of that because I can get more things situated with the NIL money that is that is coming my way than taking a chance and potentially getting drafted and released, and then having to go back to the drawing board and figure out what am I going to do next. So if you ask me, the NCAA giving the fifth year for a lot of these seniors, the COVID year, was the best thing they could have did alongside with being able to transfer once without sitting out. I think those are the best two things that the NCAA has given college players on top of these NIL deals. You're going to have a lot of new faces and new places thanks to the transfer portal. You're seeing a lot of a lot of big names in the transfer portal. Jada Curry decided to leave California. She's teaming up with Haley Van Leaf at um, Louisville. Uh, Ashley Walsu is in the transfer portal from Virginia Tech. A lot of people, fingers crossed, are hoping she joins Andrew Reese and Co. at LSU. Um, Anisha Amaro from DePaul, she's in the transfer portal. I, I'm i hoping she goes to Iowa and teams up with uh, Caitlin Clark to replace the two-man game that Caitlin had with Monica Sananu. I think that um, Anisha Morrow and Caitlin Clark would be another good dynamic duo. Or even UConn, you know. I think for a lot of these players, rack up the NIL, get the free education for the year, then... You guys can situate some things. So if the WNBA does not work out, you have something to fall back on, whether it's your education or things that you put into play. So there are a lot of pros to staying in college versus going in WNBA. But for the players that are going in the WNBA, these are players that know for sure with their talent, they're going to get drafted high, and they know for sure with their talent, they're going to make a roster. So I get it, and I understand it. But it's a risk that they're taking also. So there's pros to the WNBA, and there's cons to the WNBA, and there's, there's a lot of pros to staying as far as college basketball. It just really... It just really um, matters to what your situation is. That's what it is. It it really is based on what your situation is and what your game plan is to decide WNBA or stay in college and rack up with NIL as far as college basketball deals.